Hi, I'm Paul Frields, and I'm going to show you a couple extra tweaks to your Behringer Motor keyboard that are going to make it just a little bit better as a controller for your Pro Tools rig. Now, this is a follow up to part one of this video, and you'll find that very important. I'm going to link that in the notes below, and if everything goes well, you'll see a pop up maybe here or here that will bring you there. Uh, make sure you watch that and follow the directions before you watch or do the steps in this video, because that's going to make your life so much easier. The first video tells you how controllers for Pro Tools work and also shows you how I figured out a useful way to map a generic MIDI controller for use with Pro Tools and why a lot of controllers don't work well out of the box. That first video also showed you how to set up all your faders, your encoders, your pads, and transport controls so that your motor keyboard works well with Pro Tools in standard MIDI mode. And we even set up the pads so that they can control things like bank and track left and right so that you could navigate around your session much more easily. However, there are two things that didn't work that I know can be very useful from my experience doing recording in the studio. The track arm record function and dropping a marker on the timeline. This video will show you a cool hack to make those work as well. Here's a caveat. This video is for Mac users only. So if you're on a PC, you're probably going to be able to learn the concept of what I'm doing, but you're going to have to find your own way to do it. Uh, I don't have a Windows machine, so you're on your own there, but I'm going to point out where you're going to maybe need to do a deeper dive to figure out uh, how to accomplish the mechanics of it. I'll leave a link in the notes that you can skip to if you don't want any of the background information, if you don't want to actually learn anything in the video and you just want to you know, follow some steps. But I promise if you watch the whole thing, you're going to know a lot more about cool things that you can try with your motor keyboard beyond just what I'm giving you here in this video. So I really recommend that you watch. So once more, there are better Pro Tools controllers out there. There's no doubt about that, but they tend to be more expensive. And I know some viewers out there are on a budget. A lot of musicians are. There's no need to feel ashamed about that. Believe it or not, you can find these keyboards, these motor keyboards in the 61 key larger version for under $200, sometimes as little as $150, even new or an open box special. And that's practically as good as new. So they are a really good deal. Most importantly, it's got motorized faders and a dedicated master. All of it's programmable. It's really cool. So again, for the money, hard to beat. If you use something else, that's fine. Uh, I wanted to make this video to show people how to get the best out of their equipment so that they can get busy making music. So it's really all about supporting you fellow musicians. Let's keep that in mind. And finally, if this video makes your life better, please like it. Go down here and like the video and drop a comment. Thanks. So like I did in the last video, I'm going to explain how this works. So you're not going to be confused or you're not going to be worried about what you're doing with your computer. Um, again, we want to make two functions work. We want to be able to arm or disarm a track to record, and we want to be able to drop a marker on the timeline. Why are these important? Well, the reason for the first one's pretty simple, right? I mean, it's useful to be able to just, you know, hit the pads, go to the right track, and then arm it to record without having to reach for a keyboard or a mouse or some other piece of equipment. Now, whether you record people other than yourself or not, being able to drop a marker is also insanely useful. Now, if you're recording another performer, you don't want to interrupt their take if you hear something happen while you're recording um, that you could correct later, right? You don't want to stop them. You don't need to do that. In fact, you don't want to do that. Now, some performers will stop when the mistake's really bad and they can't get back, get back on track. That's fine. But if you hear something minor, you don't want to spoil the mood by nitpicking on it right then, right? It makes you look like an amateur. So... What you can do is with this pad function, you can drop a marker and that lets you know that you need to come back to listen to something and uh, and then you can let the artist finish their take and really get into it because you might get something golden later in the take and that wouldn't have happened if you stopped them. Now, you might also be listening back to a take or to a track and you hear something uh, that you want to investigate later. You know, maybe you're just doing mixing later and you're, you know, you're just uh, listening back for a piece. So again, just drop a marker. It's like a little... It's like a little sticky note that tells me, hey, I've got to go back and do something here. There's other uses for markers, of course, uh, but this is one of the useful functions that I found for them. Now, here's how we're going to make that work. Remember how we didn't use pads P7 and P8 in the motor in the last video? This is where those two pads are going to come in handy. Now, we can set them 
uh, to produce specific MIDI controller change messages, just like we did with our faders, with our knobs, with the transport controls, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this really cool free utility that captures those kind of messages and transforms them using an Apple script trigger into a key command for Pro Tools. Now, if you aren't familiar with Apple script, if that sounded scary, don't be scared. All right. I'm going to give you everything you need. You're not going to need to program anything. You don't need to go bury yourself in computer books, right? Not everybody's a big nerd like me. That's okay. Apple script is like a built-in language for your Mac and it lets you automate practically anything in Mac OS. That's all you really need to know for purposes of this video, but maybe this will give you other ideas uh, for things that you can do later on. So how do we get started? The link for a cool utility called MIDI pipe is going to be in the notes for this video. We're going to grab that utility off the internet. MIDI pipe is an amazing program and it lets you do all sorts of crazy things from a MIDI controller. Now it is free, completely free, but I encourage you donate some money to the author. He has a PayPal link right on his site, even just sending a few euros or a few dollars, the cost of a, a small meal or even just a, a single coffee or a beer, right? Wherever you are in the world is a really cool move. And I'm not kidding. It's like a Swiss army knife and a universal translator all rolled into one for MIDI, but it's only for Mac OS X. That's where the Mac only part of this video comes in. Now it works for a lot of Mac OS X. I think there are versions out there for uh, 10.3, and above all the way to Catalina. So even if you stopped updating a couple years ago, it should still work fine. And I'm sorry, Windows users, if you're a smart cookie though, feel free to keep watching because from what I'm gonna show you, you may be able to figure out how to do this with a Windows utility that has similar functions. I just don't know what that is. So like I said before, you're gonna be on your own there. Okay, Mac users, now that you've downloaded that program, open up the zip file. And inside, you're going to find a bunch of things. You'll find some example pipes. You're going to find the actual program MIDI pipe itself. I want you to grab that program and copy it to your applications folder. And that way, you're going to be able to launch this anytime from the apps list in your finder, if you like. And that's what we're going to do next. Go ahead and launch that application. Now, when you're looking at this, you may not know what to do next. That's fine. I've provided a helpful script that you're going to be able to download, and that does all the work for you. You don't even have to write anything. Just click the configuration file link, and that's going to be linked in the notes below this video. Just click that link, and you can download the file, and that file is called BehringerMotorPipe.mipi. That's a MIDI pipe file. So you save that file into your documents folder or somewhere you know where to find it. Now, in MIDI pipe, use the file open command or hit command O to open a file and open the file that you just downloaded. Everything that you need opens up for you now. Select the MIDI in pipe on the right side of the window. Make sure that the MIDI input that's listed shows port one on your motor keyboard. That's the MIDI port, remember, not the Mackie control port, which is port two. We don't want to use that. We want to use port one. So it's very important to have that selected. Now select the Apple script trigger pipe on the right side. And let's walk through this for a second. See if you can tell how this file works by reading it. It's not quite English, but it's not too hard to understand if you've done any any kind of technical work in your in your background. So let's just take a look at it. This listens for MIDI messages, and those messages come in the form of just numbers. So if the first number in that message is 176, that means it's a controller change. And if the third piece of data, the third number that comes in is not zero, it means something has happened there. And so we're listening for a controller change with non-zero data attached in the third part of the message. We then look at the second piece of data to see if that controller change that's sent is either number 25 or number 26. That's what these two sections are looking for. And depending on which one of those is detected, the Apple script runs some code. If it doesn't detect one of those, it simply ignores it and moves on. Now, if the controller change was number 25, Apple script tells the OS to make sure that Pro Tools is in the foreground, it's active, and then it sends the key, then it sends the keystroke to drop a marker, and that uses the key code for an enter on a Mac computer's numeric keypad. So that's the same keystroke that would drop a marker if you were in the middle of a session. So all this does is emulates that keystroke. It then sends it to Pro Tools. Pro Tools then drops a marker. If the control change was 26, 
The script tells the OS to make sure that Pro Tools is active again, and then it sends the R key, right? That's what this key code is, R, and that will arm or disarm whichever track is selected right now for recording. Now that we've checked that out, let's set up the motor so it's going to provide these two controller change messages that we want. Now before you start, make sure that you're in MIDI mode, which you should be if you just came from the last video, and make sure that pad bank 1 to 8 is selected. Also, make sure that you're on the preset that you already used for setting up Pro Tools work on your motor. I'm going to assume that you've done that from the last video and that you saved your work. So be in that preset to start. Now let's start with controller P7. That's pad P7. From the global menu, select MIDI and then select change control. Now select pad P7 by tapping it. Try not to hit any other controls and that way P7 stays active. Click the data knob to select P7 now that you have it active. Select USB plus MIDI by clicking the knob again. Select MIDI channel 1 by clicking again. Now remember what we want to do is we want to send a controller change uh, message. So we're going to send controller change number 25 by dialing the knob and clicking. Now you may see a message that this conflicts with another setting. That's okay. Confirm it anyway by clicking the knob again. Now you can select variable value for the control. Although just like with the pad settings in the previous video, it really doesn't matter. However hard you hit the pad, you want the same thing to happen. Now, repeat this process again for pad P8, but this time use controller change number 26. Now you've set up both of those pad controls. It's time to test the results. Now for this to work, you need to be running MIDI pipe in the background, so make sure that that application stays open. It consumes very little CPU time, so it shouldn't get in the way of recording unless your system is very underpowered for your settings. Now launch Pro Tools. I'm going to assume that you already have set up all the options for your motor controller as a MIDI controller in Pro Tools. If you haven't, again, you need to go back and watch the first video, do all the steps there, save your work, and then come back here. Now open up a session or create one with a track that you can test. Now one thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that the control for link track and edit selection in Pro Tools is selected. And this makes the arming and disarming of tracks more intuitive in my experience. Now that you've done that, try hitting pads P7 and P8 a little bit. If you're on a newer Mac OS X like Mojave, you're going to notice nothing may happen at this point. Right? Don't panic. That's okay. That's because we need to update the security settings in Mac OS X. You have to give MIDI pipe permission to send control information to other applications like Pro Tools. You need to be an administrator on the Mac to do this, but if you're using your own computer, laptop, iMac, whatever, that should probably be the case already. So to do this, open the system preferences in your system. Then go to security and privacy. Click the lock and enter your password so you can make changes. Scroll down to accessibility and select it. Look for MIDI pipe in the list of applications and give it permission. That's going to allow it to control your computer the way you need it to. Also, scroll to the automation settings and make sure that MIDI pipe also has permission to send system events. This is probably already set, but if it's not, turn it on. Now you can return to Pro Tools. Try hitting pad P8 and you're going to see that the uh, track will be armed or disarmed uh, to record. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. And now hit play using your motor's transport control. Remember, we set these up already. So start up the playback head, let it roll. And while it's rolling, use pad P7 to drop a marker on the timeline without disturbing playback. Now, when you drop a marker, you are going to get a dialogue box that asks you to enter some information. And you don't really have to do anything. You could just hit enter on your keyboard. Uh, in order to uh, continue moving along. So that won't disturb your recording or your playback while you're using it. Now, I hope this video has helped you get your motor controller to the next level. Now, here's a couple last notes for you. Make sure you save your work. So go to edit and presets and save the preset that includes these extra changes. And remember, you can do a lot more with MIDI pipe than what I've showed you. It's possible to automate all sorts of things using this utility. Now, because you have four banks of pads, it's like turning those pads into brand new pads. So you actually can use four sets of those eight pads to do other things. 
So you could put other cool functions on pads nine through 32 to do whatever you like. Anything that you could hit a series of keystrokes for, you could do by programming a pad through Apple Script. That's pretty cool. For instance, maybe you want to turn quick punch mode on and off. Maybe you want to switch from the mix to the project window. That's a keystroke too. Command equals does that in Pro Tools. You could program one of your other pads to do that if you like. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. Now, I've got plenty of things to do already in my life, so I can't help you with your individual questions on how to automate things. So I'm going to leave that to you. This is something for you to learn. But you can take a look at my Apple script and that'll give you some ideas. You can copy and paste things in order to make them work for your particular situation. Remember, MIDI pipe needs to be running while you're using Pro Tools if you want these extra pads to work, though. If you're really ambitious, you can even automate a startup that opens MIDI pipe whenever you open Pro Tools so you don't have to remember that. That's pretty cool. Now, I hope this helped you. And if so, remember, please like the video and just leave me a comment saying, hey, thanks, or I dug your video, or hey, you need a haircut, any of those things. It's all cool, right? Um, and again, if you want to donate something to the MIDI pipe author, go to his site, and that would also be cool. Just awesome that he provides this for free. So please send him some love, okay? And I guess I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your motor and enjoy making some music.